Xbox announced today that they're working very, very hard to take over gaming with the help of Microsoft. And the PS5 might not have an answer for it. All that, now. Welcome to Z Gadget Review. Today, Xbox and Microsoft pretty much announce that they are 100% committed to gaming as a platform, as an economy, as something that they see very, very important in their future. As we know, Xbox has been putting a lot of effort into their cloud gaming service. Not only that, but also Game Pass. Game Pass, as I've said before, has become the main thing that Xbox is working on. They did say that they are committed to consoles and the consoles will offer the best experience when it comes to gaming. On that end, I do believe them a little bit. But as we know, Game Pass has been their major biggest focus for this generation. As I've mentioned before, Microsoft and Xbox are 100% into Game Pass as the future of gaming, especially for the Xbox platform. Starting with the announcement that they are going to leverage the power of their current 23 first-party gaming studios to release at least one new game every quarter. So that will make it about four games a year, you know, four quarters a year, four games a year, which sounds like an ambitious promise coming from Xbox, especially because Xbox lacks a lot of exclusives compared to the PlayStation, Xbox doesn't have any exclusives. I mean, they have the regulars, Ge uh, Gears of War or Gears now, Halo. Um, they just came out with a medium, but the medium also is going to be on the PlayStation, supposedly. So those are some of the games that come to mind right now, but they don't really have anything. The fact that they're going to be striving for four games a year, for brand new games a year, says a lot about where they see the Xbox brand going. They also say that they're not stopping at acquiring studios, meaning that we might have some sort of announcement of an acquisition sometime this year. I don't expect anything for E3 because the reason that they announce all these things today is because they're going to focus on games at E3 and nothing else is what they say. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because I will be doing a live stream of that Xbox E3 presentation or Xbox Bethesda, both of them live stream be there we believe that games that interactive entertainment and really about hardware and software it's not about pixels it's about people games bring people together said spencer games build bridges and forge bonds generating mutual empathy among people all over the world joy and community that's what we're here and that's a segue to them saying that they will finally release an Xbox app for your TV. Last year, uh, yeah, last year I made a video on that when Phil Spencer kind of said that we will be seeing an Xbox app come for your TV in the next 12 months. And this is something that they're actively working on at the moment. And the reason why I say that Microsoft is all into Xbox, which is a huge turnaround from where Xbox was a few years ago. Xbox a few years ago was on the verge of being sold off to another company. Gaming is fundamentally aligned with our mission as a company, said Nadella. When you talk about Xbox's mission to bring the joy and community of gaming to everyone on the planet, which I absolutely love, that is precisely aligned with Microsoft's mission, which is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And this translates into them having new options for Game Pass subscriptions. One of the things that they also announced in this long list of announcements that they made in, as a blog post is that they are exploring new offerings for Game Pass subscriptions where they can make it more affordable for more people to be able to have access to gaming. Meaning that at some point we should see lower, cheaper tiers of Game Pass that might include certain things that other tiers might not include. I wonder if we will see something like ad-based subscriptions or subscriptions when you don't have necessarily access to cloud gaming where you are stuck with the app and you can only play whatever games are available in the app on your tier. That's obviously a lot of um, speculation on my part because I don't really know. 
But it will make sense that they could, you know, why not give you an ad every hour of your game? Like if you're playing a game, you know that if you're playing a game for an hour, you're going to see an ad, like a 45 second ad or a minute ad. I think a lot of people probably will put up with that if they have access to uh, like a $6 tier, for example. It's not inconceivable. The other thing that they announced is that they are working on expanding their Xbox All Access program. Now, if you are not aware with what Xbox All Access is, I'll tell you really quick. They announced this program at the beginning of the next-gen console sales where you could pick an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series X and make payments without having an interest charge on your payments. So technically, you will have a loan. And the other attractive thing about the Xbox All Access program is that you also had Game Pass included with that payment that you were making every month for the console. So they are working on expanding this program to make it more accessible to more people and to work with other partners to sell the consoles in that way. At the beginning of the next-gen console cycle, when the consoles weren't announced yet, there was this rumor of a console codename Lockhart, that it was going to be like an Xbox Series X, but it was going to be all digital. I guess the Xbox Series X kind of serves as that, but it's an underpowered console compared to the Xbox Series X. And now it seems that Lockhart is actually going to be a streaming stick by Xbox. Technically, a stick that you can plug in the back of your TV and get the signal from xCloud or Cloud Gaming Game Pass and play your games. This comes from The Verge. The Verge. We're also developing standalone streaming devices that you can plug into a TV monitor. So if you have a strong internet connection, you can stream your Xbox experience, reveals Hanren. Now, unlike Google and Stadia, where they touted 4K speeds, no matter where the hell you are and all this stuff, they're actually keeping things realistic, talking about your internet speed. If your internet speed allows it, and you'll be able to have a good experience. If you're clamoring for Game Pass on a browser, cloud gaming on a browser, I did a review on that and the video you can find on the description section. That is going to be open to the public in the next couple of weeks. So you should have access using a web browser to play games in the next couple of weeks. The other big announcement and very exciting announcement that I'm glad that is finally, finally going to happen is that Xbox is updating their data centers with Xbox Series X consoles. That's right. Meaning that your cloud gaming experience is going to get much, much better. And if you've seen some of my videos, my biggest issue with Xbox Cloud Gaming was the load times. The load times always were the longest among all cloud gaming providers. But them bringing in their Xbox Series X into their data centers and giving us the power to use cloud gaming on those devices means that it's going to make a huge difference when you play games. If you live in Australia, Brazil, Mexico, or Japan, you can look forward to your own cloud gaming experience coming out later this year. They also announced that cloud gaming will be coming to a console near you at some point, giving you the chance of playing games before you decide to download them. Why is this so important? One, as I've said before, storage is at a premium on this generation. Right now, if you want to get an expandable storage hard drive for the Xbox, it's $250. $250 for one terabyte. And as that might sound like a lot of room for games, it isn't. Trust me when I say that an Xbox Series X with one terabyte gives you about six, seven games, next-gen games. If you do a combination like I'm doing... I think I have a total of nine games on my console right now. and that. But that means that if I want to download a brand new game right now, which is probably going to happen when all the E3 games come out later this year, I'm going to have to remove games from there in order to make room for new games, which is a hassle, you know, because now you won't have that game available if you decide to play it at some point. 
And so having the cloud to play games ahead of time gives you the chance of one, maybe playing a game that you want to play, but you don't necessarily want to take precious real estate in your storage. Or maybe you want to try out the game and the game is so good that it becomes one of those games that you're like, I have to download this so I can play it all the time without any hiccups or delays and play it at the highest fidelity that I can play it on. Cloud gaming is going to, I think, play a major part on this generation. Not only because you can take your gaming anywhere you want, but also because as I just said, you can try out games in your console at home and make a decision whether the game is worth downloading or not. And Phil Spencer didn't lose the chance to take a small dig at the PS5. This comes from Tech Raider. So right now we are the only platform shipping games on console, PC, and cloud simultaneously, Spencer said. Others bring console games to PC years later, not only making people buy their hardware up front, but then charging them a second time to play on PC. And of course, all of our games are in our subscription service day one, full cross-platform included. That definitely was a dig at PS5 and Sony and not a subtle dig, but I will say an explicit dig. And he does have some truth in that. While the PlayStation has remained as a close ecosystem where you had to have their console in order to buy their games or play their games, now they are opening a little more into the opportunities that PC provides them. And that's because they have seen how much money they can make by selling their games on PC. But it is true that the big difference here is that Sony does charge full price if you want to play the game on PC. They don't just give it to you because you already own it. And there's, I will say, two things that are why PlayStation Sony do that. One is because they don't have as much money as Microsoft has. So that's one. Two, they can get away with it because they have built this mystique, kind of like Apple has, that their games are the best for this and greatest than any other game you can find in any other platform. And, you know, it's worthwhile to pay the money twice if you want to play them. But I think that this is changing as time is going, as this Game Pass experiment is becoming the norm. And I think that Sony has to address that at some point. They could not stay where they are right now. Because if they do, they're going to go the way of the Walkman. And you will think that by them having this experience from losing market before, to other companies that they would jump ahead and say, this is what we have, this is what we're doing, here's our plans. I do hope that Sony addresses this at E3 and they talk about the PlayStation Now platform and what they're going to do uh, with cloud gaming and how they're going to grow the platform and expand to other people. I also do believe that this is a game changer when it comes to gaming. Uh, Xbox has a huge library of games. It's not as big as Sony's. It's not as iconic as Sony's, but it is a lot better than what Stadia can offer you or what Luna, Amazon's cloud gaming service, can offer you. If they do make it accessible, I think that a lot of companies are going to have to play a lot of catch up with Xbox the way they're going. What do you think about this announcement? Does this make you excited about the future of Xbox, about the future of gaming? Do you think that Sony has an answer? Do you think that the PlayStation is going to come out with some sort of answer at E3? Let me know in the comment section. That's it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.